In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at comparing linear relations. So we're not going to be really learning any new operations or any new equations or anything. We're going to be dealing with the same type of linear equations, y equals mx plus b, constant and multiplier, that we've looked at in the past. However, we are going to look at different scenarios involving two linear relationships, as well as how to analyze um, graphs and tables and equations when dealing with two of them in the same scenario. So in our scenario here, we have two amusement parks. We have Mathematical World that charges a $20 admission fee to the park, plus a $2 or an additional $2 for each ride. Radical Island charges $3 for each ride, but does not charge an admission fee to the park. So we want to figure out which amusement park costs less. Now right off the bat, you might say, well, $3 per ride, it's only $3 compared to the $20 that we are um, paying to get into the park. So Radical Island is cheaper. But is that going to be the same for every scenario? So we, we want to go through and look at all different scenarios, or in this case, looking at all different number of rides to see, is Radical Island always going to be the cheapest? Or are there going to be different scenarios where one ride or one park is cheaper than the other? There's different ways we can go about looking at this. We can use tables, we can use graphs, and we're also going to look at using algebra. So using tables will probably be the easiest thing to start off first. So looking at Mathematical World, we know that it's $20 to get in plus a $2 fee per ride. So if we wanted to think of this as an equation, y equals 2x, because 2 is our multiplier per ride, plus the $20 admission fee, which you only pay once, that's our constant. So that means that zero rides cost $20. If I go on five rides, five rides at $2 per ride is $10, plus the 20 gives me 30. Here we can see that we're always going up by five in terms of number of rides. So our cost is always going to be going up by 10. Because every time we go on five rides, it's an extra $10. So 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. For Radical Island, Radical Island has $3 per ride. So as an equation, that's just y equals 3x. There's no, con there's no constant, or the constant you could argue is zero, because we're not being charged anything to go in. So zero rides, zero dollars. Five rides at $3 per ride is 15. 10 is 30. 15 is 45. 20 is 60. 25 is 75, and 30 is 90. So now using the tables, hopefully we can see a comparison between them, especially because they're side by side. We can see when one park is cheaper than the other. Just looking at the amounts, we can see, well, anywhere from zero up to just below 20 rides, Radical Island seems cheaper. We should also see that there is a point in both parks where the cost is the same. At 20 rides, it doesn't matter which park you go to, it's the same. And then finally, if we look at Math Mat Magical World, Anything above 20 rides, it seems, is cheaper. So looking at this scenario between the two parks, it appears that there's three different options for which one's cheaper. Anywhere from 0 to 20 rides, Radical Island is cheaper. At 20 rides, it doesn't matter which one you go to, it's the same. And if you go more than 20 rides, it appears that Mathematical World is going to be cheaper. 
So there's three different scenarios and we can see that from the table by looking at the cost and the number of rides. Let's do the same thing with a graph. We have our equations, so we should be able to graph them, right? Mathematical world is y equals 2x plus 20, which means we start at 20 and we go for every one ride or we go over one up two. Now it's gonna be a little bit harder here based on the values that we have, but let's actually go through and just kind of use um, our tables. Right, so we have five might be a little bit difficult because it does appear that our scale is going up by two, but I can go every 10 and 10 would be 40, 20 would be 60, and 30 would be 80. Now you might be like, well, why am I skipping points? And again, when we talked about rise over run, you should realize that it doesn't matter if we skip points as long as we're using the points from the same relationship, we'll get the same line or the same graph. We're just getting, we're just using fewer points to do it. It'll still give us the same slope or multiplier and it still gives us the same constant or starting point. So you can skip points and put label or at least plot the nice easy ones depending on the scale you have. So this is our mathematical world and let's graph now radical island. So we know the constant is zero or at zero rides, it's gonna cost us zero dollars. So we know where our constant or our starting point should be. And again, we can graph our points from our table. You could do over one up three for our rise over run for our multiplier, but because our scale makes it a little bit more difficult, let's use the key points we know. At 10 rides, it's 30. At 20 rides, it's 60, and at 30 rides, it's 90. So again, just taking those points from, from our table. And if we graph it, actually that should have been in orange. And there we go, fix that. So we can see it's a little bit easier when we're using graphs to see the difference between the two because we can clearly see which one's cheaper by seeing which line is lower, All right? So we can clearly see that our radical island is cheaper from zero to 20 rides We can see that at this point, they're the same. And then we can see that anything from 20 rides and above, mathematical world is cheaper. So again, we can see the same thing in the graph by looking at which line is lower or below the other one. And even looking at the graph, if you were starting to graph it point by point, you should be seeing that, well, mathematical world is less steep, so Radical Island should start to overtake it at some point. So that's how you can use the graphs to figure out um, which scenario is cheaper. Using algebra is a little bit trickier because really we only use algebra to figure out one scenario. We use algebra to figure out when they are the same. So we use algebra to figure out when they are the same um, because that's really the main thing that we can do. And then we can in make inferences or make assumptions based on what we know about the equations for which one's gonna be cheaper before the point that they're the same and after the point that they're the same. So in order to figure out when they're the same, we've done something similar to this before. We have our two equations. We have our mathematical world. We have our radical island.
if I want to figure out when they're the same, I want to basically figure out when are the y values equal to each other? Or when are they the same? And if I were to say that these y values were equal, I could make this statement 2x plus 20 would have to equal 3x. It's this, they're, if they equal the same thing, then they, the two expressions or equations should equal each other. Now that I have something like this, I should be able to solve this because this is just a multi-step equation. I have x variables on both sides, so I need to get them to one side first. So in this case, I have 3x on one side. I want it, and it's all by itself. So let's get rid of this 2x. So I'm going to minus 2x from one side, minus 2x from the other side. One side cancels out completely. I'm left with 20 equals 1x, or basically 20 equals x. So this is part of my solution. This tells me that they will be the same or not they, sorry, the cost. So cost will be the same at 20 rides because x, the x value represents number of rides. Now to figure out what the cost is, I can use this value and plug it into any point or into any equation. Let's say the easiest one, y equals 3x. I know that they're going to cost the same at 20 rides. So let's say y equals 3 times 20. y equals 60. So that means at 20 rides, it costs $60. So from this, by setting the equations equal to each other, I, fi I can figure out how many rides they're going to be the same, uh, the cost will be the same at, and then using that, in either equation, I can figure out what the actual cost would be. If I were to take that 20x and plug it into the first equation over here, y equals 2x plus 20, I would get the same answer of 60. And I can see that in my table and in my graph. Now, this only tells you when they're going to be the same. It doesn't tell us when um, one is going to be cheaper than the other. But we can make inferences on that. And what I mean by that is, by looking at the two equations, which one do we know is going to be more expensive first? By looking at the two of them, we kind of talked about this earlier, I know mathematical world is going to be more expensive because it has that constant. So mathematical world is more expensive first. Then we know they're the same at 20 rides. So we could go back and say mathematical world is more expensive up to 20 rides. They're the same at 20 rides because we figured that out algebraically. And then after we can say that Radical Island is going to be more expensive. And we can tell that because of the steeper or the larger multiplier. Because of the larger multiplier, eventually Radical Island is going to pass. And we know it's going to pass after the 20 rides. So Radical Island is more expensive after 20 rides or more than 20 rides. So that is how you can use algebra to first determine where they're going to be the same and then using our knowledge about the equations we can determine which one's going to be more expensive first and then which one when they're going to be the same and then which one's going to be more expensive after so let's look through another scenario and go through the same three different um, options 
So looking at a ski club, the Crosley Ski Club has two options for when they can go skiing. Under which scenario should they choose each option? So again, we want to figure out when would be better to choose Kissing Bridge or when would be better to choose Holiday Valley. So Kissing Bridge has a charge of $50 per day with no registration fee. So again, we know that, or we should be able to come up with an equation, y equals 50x. Holiday Valley, on the other hand, has a daily price of $40 and a registration fee of $30. So y equals the multiplier per day, 40. So 40x plus the flat fee of 30. So we can start off with a table. For the Kissing Bridge, zero rides, zero dollars. One or one day, 50 days, or 50 dollars. Two, 100, three, 150, four, 200, five, 250, six, 300. Holiday Valley, a little bit different, zero days, still costs $30. One day is going to be $40 on top of that, so 70. Two is 110. Three is 150. Four is 190. Five is 230. And six is 270. So right from the table, we should be able to determine which one is, or when one is better than the other. So again, we can see right off the bat, this one might be a little bit, or right off the bat, we can see that Kissing Bridge is going to be cheaper up to this point, which would happens to be three days, where if you go for three days at either location, the cost is going to be the same. And then we can see that after three days, if you're at Holiday Valley, it's cheaper. So from the table, we can say, well, if you go anywhere from zero to three days, you should go to Kissing Bridge. If you go three days, exactly, it doesn't matter where you go. And if you go more than three days, you want to go to Holiday Valley. So that's how you can use a table. Let's put that same information into a graph to see again what it would show us and just understand where we can get the same um, information from. So for Kissing Bridge, zero days, zero dollars. One day, $50. Oops, that's not 50. 50 dollars, two days, 100. Three, 150. Four, 200. So it's okay if we can't graph all of our points um, because we can see from our table that we've graphed enough to actually visually see when the changeover happens. So we have Kissing Bridge. And then for Holiday Valley, zero, it's $30. One, it's 70. Two, it's 110. Three, it's 150. And four, it's 190. So again, we can see exactly where they're the same. We can see when Holiday Valley is cheaper, or sorry, Kissing Bridge is cheaper. So Kissing Bridge is cheaper. And then we can also see when Holiday Valley is cheaper. So again, we can see those three scenarios when one is cheaper than the other, when they're the same, and when the other option is cheaper than the first one. So again, we can see, or we should be able to see the three different scenarios in our graph that we also see in our table. Algebraically, again, y equals 50x was for kissing bridge. For 
for Holiday Valley, it was y equals 40x plus 30. Again, we algebraically, we can find when they're the same and then use our knowledge of the equations to figure out when one is cheaper than the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the, point, set the equations equal to each other. Again, because we're trying to figure out when the cost is the same, we can put them equal to each other because essentially we're saying, well, if the y's are going to be the same, let's figure out what the x values would have to equal or that these equations should equal the same thing. Now that we have two equations set equal to each other, it becomes a multi-step equation. I want to get all my x's on one side, so I'm going to minus 40x from this side, minus 40x from the other side. To keep it balanced, one side will cancel out. We're left with 10x equals 30. I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide by 10, divide by 10 on the other side. One side cancels out, x equals 3. So this tells me then that the cost will be the same at three days or three visits. To figure out what that cost is, I can take this, equa th this value and plug it into any equation that I look at. Right? I have y equals 50x or y equals 40x plus 30. I'm going to do the y equals 50x just because it's going to be easier, it's less calculations. y equals 50 times 3, y equals 150. So this means the cost for three days is $150. So when I'm trying to answer the question now of which one is cheaper, which one is the better option, I have three different things to think about. Right? I've seen that in the other representations. For the equations, <clears throat> I know, or when using algebra, the cost is the same at three days. And if I look at the equation, how can I figure out which one is going to be cheaper up to three days? And usually what you can do is look at which one has the constant. If you have a constant and the other one doesn't, chances are that one is going to be automatically more expensive than the other. It may not be depending on what the constant is, but looking at our scenario, we can see, well, I have $40 per day plus, a thir plus an additional 30 right off the bat whereas the other one is just 50. So the one with the constant here is gonna be more expensive. So that means that Kissing Bridge is cheaper up to three days. And then after three days, it would switch. So that means that Holiday Valley is cheaper for more than three days. So again, same as before when we were looking at the, the different amusement parks, when we're dealing with two linear relationships or we're comparing them, we should have three different scenarios. We should have one where they're the same and then two different scenarios where one is cheaper than the other. So there's three things we need to consider when comparing two linear relationships. So in summary, when working with two different lines, the solution to those lines is the point where the lines meet. So if we were asked to find the solution to those two equations, it would be where they meet. This is also called the point of intersection. The point of intersection, 
or you might see it as POI. But basically, it's where the lines cross. And what that point of intersection tells us is that at a certain x value, the y values will be the same. Again, we've talked about that in our two scenarios. That point of intersection was where the cost was the same. When working with contextual problems, or basically word problems, like the amusement park one we looked at, the conclusions or our answer should have three parts. One part where the values for both scenarios are the same. So again, that's the point of intersection. One part where the values of one line are lower and the other line are higher. And a third part where the values of that first line are higher and the second line is lower. So again, basically you're looking at the scenario before the point and the scenario after the point. So when you're solving a problem like this, you have to make sure, again, depending on what the question is asking, but you should be looking at the three different parts of the scenario. The point of intersection, before the point, and after the point. So again, nothing really new in terms of actual operations. We've dealt with graphing lines before, coming up with tables. We've dealt with solving equations, um, multi-step equations. The only difference in this one was more um, how to analyze what we were looking at.